I wanted to have a little stream of consciousness conversation about just the deconditioning uh, process, deconditioning idea in general, as well as a little bit about just the pure heart consciousness and the pure source consciousness. Because it is tied into this conversation very much. It is tied into becoming deconditioned and reaching the unconditioned sort of inner child level as well as the unconditioned, just the soul. Where we don't have so much of that programming going on, where we can come from a very pure consciousness, very pure soul level. What, what the heart center has to do with it is because that is ultimately our portal to the source consciousness itself. It will be where we can find that access to, first of all, our higher self, our multidimensional selves, our I am presence, our sort of Christ did, or Buddha consciousness, whichever you prefer, enlightened consciousness, I suppose, our own sort of ascended master consciousness, our own angelic consciousness, starseed consciousness, our oversoul consciousness, all of this, as well as, of course, the pure source consciousness, the pure creator level consciousness, and the multiverse consciousness beyond source. And so the access to this divine inner child and the pure inner child, first of all, it's a very beautiful process when it starts to happen. A lot of us have inner child wounds and then we have conditioning from all of this time that we have been on this planet and we have different types of conditionings. And our goal in the deconditioning process is to understand which parts did we take on because of the conditioning that happened throughout our lives and which parts were actually um, a part of the growth process. And finally, there's something just about being an adult, being a conditioned adult, that has just taken on all kinds of roles and all kinds of ways of being in this world. I use quotations because this world is so much more than all of this conditioning and programming, you know. When it comes to the very much conditioned adult that most of us kind of adapt or adopt into, that's one layer of uh, deconditioning that we're gonna do. Then of course it gets deeper and deeper, it goes deeper into the inner teenager levels and of course different childhood programs and conditionings and whatnot. A lot of this starts to happen kind of naturally in the soul's evolution process whenever we kind of um, start to work with our higher levels. And when I say higher levels, that is not a hierarchy and I kind of wish I didn't have to say that. But I feel like because there is so much just programming around words themselves and because we just happen to have these words to describe them um, and because there's like so many different levels of consciousness like the, the higher self is not necessarily the same level as the source it's a spectrum, like I do study this from both the information but mostly from heart I just wanted to also state that the heart por portal and just the way that I learn and the way that I see also a lot of humanities starting to learn, especially those of us that are on the star state or ascension or spiritual evolution path, the learning is going here. And it's not by heart, it's through the heart, it's through practical application of divine love and our divine consciousness and divine awareness that is doing the teaching for us not always just books, not always just the mental, uh, you know, rabbit holes and whatnot. It kind of goes beyond that. It goes deeper, you know? <laughs> so that's kind of the, I suppose, perspective that I want to approach this from. And whenever we start to learn through the heart what, for example, the higher self, even just the human higher self feels like, what the starseed aspects feel like, or the multidimensional self, what the I am presence, Christ itself, or Buddhic self, and the enlightened self, what those feel like, what our oversoul consciousness feels like, what 
does it feel like to embody an angelic frequency or something like that, a warrior frequency, some, some people have that as well. I feel like a, a lot of us actually have kind of an aspect of a warrior and then um, then more of a, I suppose, peaceful side as well. I feel like some of us just um, tap into different things more than others. <laughs> just understanding these levels of consciousness, when we start to work with that heart center energy, that high heart, um, that, that pure love consciousness, and we start to work with our higher levels and our multidimensional self and all that stuff, that's when it starts to, depending on the person, either it's a very slow process or it's a very quick and rapid process of kind of peeling off the layers of conditioning, peeling off the layers of different say traumas or as some people like to call them shadows, I don't necessarily call them shadows, always, sometimes yes, sometimes that's the easiest uh, sort of perspective to grasp it from. But the shadows are also a part of the conditioning, so uh, because when there is physical matter, the light will cast a shadow behind the physical matter. That's uh, it, Technically it's a part of the illusion of being in this existence. And since we're humans, for a lot of us it is a part of that whole thing, and I don't think it's useful to be judging those things. Just mentioning it, because it is a part of the deconditioning process, and I I have dive, <laughs> dove into those uh, aspects of myself a lot in my deconditioning process. Like, my deconditioning process was understanding, you know, just the self-love from a whole another perspective than what I often see. But there are a few people who actually do it in a very similar way as I have done it. It's like a lot of self-acceptance, which comes through that, you know, shadow work. Diving deep into things that might be, for example, a bit triggering, things that might be uncomfortable, things that might be challenging, things that might be almost unconscious and subconscious, those type of things, and different sides of ourselves that we don't really enjoy particularly. And like I said, healing trauma, healing different sore spots and that type of stuff. And so a lot of the times this that is a very psychological way to do shadow work. And I feel like it can be very helpful for those that need that type of support. But I also feel like in a spiritual sense, shadow work is different. It's not always just about the psychology, it can be about other things. It can be, for example, seeing things that you didn't want to see in the spiritual realms, for example. And I've also done that, like I've gone to see some things that I didn't necessarily ask to see, but my higher self was um, doing some exploration, <laughs> I suppose. and. I have also done this sometimes more consciously and I did want to kind of mention that because uh, there have been times when I've been tapping into some lower consciousness that necessarily didn't provide the most pure and clear energetic sort of transmission and I own up to that and those videos are not really on this channel anymore. I definitely resonate a lot more with the higher consciousness and what I wanted to say about that is uh, it's not a value judgment, although at some point, if you are doing this in a similar way as I am, if you are wanting to raise your vibration, well, that's such an old school term, old school term though, I don't really like that. But if you are doing this in a way where you are doing this for ascension, at some point that lower consciousness cannot be that low as it was. So eventually, that very dense energy is just not allowed in your energy field anymore because if you do give it that much attention or even if you hold space for it, it might start to, you know, compromise the energetics. Uh, well, I wouldn't want to say it starts to compromise the energetics, but it might just be, yeah, it starts to kind of almost be like a distraction, if that makes sense. And I'm feeling... I might be going through one of those sort of uh, passages in my life as well. And of course there's a lot of like 
deconditioning that has to do with that as well. I find that, yeah, part of the deconditioning process is also learning things that we have picked up in our adult's life and then we're getting like new information and now we have to figure out, okay, what's the truth? What is really the truth? What is the pure truth? What is the direct truth? Talking about the higher versus lower consciousness, I'm not judging that. I'm simply talking about what is pure versus what is distorted and where on the dimensional scale are we hanging out in and what can hang out with the other one. Like I had a lucid dream about somebody who I used to be friends with and this person was a bit prone to drama and so therefore when this dream was happening they were trying to whip up some drama again. In this dream they were just talking and trying to whip up drama. I was sitting down, they were standing up. Then I stand up, I go next to them, we both kind of sit down. I bring in the peaceful vibration. They just couldn't say anything with that. They were trying to still have a conversation with me, but they weren't really listening. And even when I woke up from this dream, from this lucid dream, they were trying to keep up this conversation. In that moment, I was using my peaceful and calm energy to override and override that lower uh, dramatic and, and conflict-prone energy that was there. When we talk about the, the higher vibration shifting away the lower vibration, it's not just like, oh, think positive and nothing negative will happen. <laughs> it's not necessarily that simple because it really has to go deeper. You really do have to go into the energetics of each uh, situation in order to do that. And I find that this is also um, an important thing to keep in mind in the deconditioning process. Because whenever you are deconditioning from, say, very old beliefs that are holding your energy field down, the new has to also kind of come in and push some of that out. And we do really need to know what is the best energetic antidote to the poison or the lower energy. It's something that we just have to learn on our own, right? It's not something that we can always necessarily read in books because sometimes um, the way people speak about this is very copy-paste and they haven't necessarily always learned it through and through. This is again one of those learn with your heart type of situations. Because sometimes it's just like, okay, this has to be like the exact opposite, but sometimes it's not necessarily like that. Sometimes it kind of depends on the situation. One more thing that I didn't talk about yet is the deconditioning. It isn't talked about in a lot of uh, metaphysical teachings, to be honest. But where I've heard it the most is human design and astrology, and I feel like even in those circles, yeah, it takes a bit more psychological turn, but it also... In human design they say it's gonna take seven years, and I don't believe in that. I believe that deconditioning, it can be as quick or as long as we want to, but it's also constantly moving because the evolution that we go through as souls can also be a very rapid process and it can also, you know, happen outside of a time frame like this. So therefore, when we decondition, it can also happen throughout this evolution process, and it usually does, because we're kind of deconditioning the previous model <laughs> of our sort of energetic blueprint. And then we're integrating and embodying and incorporating the new sort of version of ourselves. And of course the death of the old self kind of has to do with this. That would be maybe a deeper topic to discuss and how I kind of see it is that we're maybe not holding that much towards uh, that much like energetic and emotional attachment towards the past self and the well of course there are parts to this also where yes it does have to do with the, the a part of the old self might have to do with just what the self has adopted as a way to cope in this world and stuff like that so in those cases it can be more, you know, intense where you're actually leaving behind an old version of yourself completely. For some people that is 
very much what happens, but for some people it may not be that uh, sort of a stark difference. It might be a little bit more like, yeah, we're just kind of rewriting how we saw this past version of ourselves. And then we uh, start to incorporate more of the new. So I also find that that can depend on a person. And it is a part of the deconditioning process, because when we decondition, we're, we're letting go of a lot of that old self, you know. So it is a part of it. I definitely want to discuss that more at some point, because I've definitely gone through a lot of transformations myself. <laughs> I think this is starting to uh, get closer to the finish line. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for listening. Uh, I'll talk to you soon.